Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. My name is William. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Today we're going to be picking back up in the Diamond DA62. It's been a while. We're at Mount Cook. We'll be flying on to Hakitika. Hakitika. Um, probably mispronouncing that, but uh, yeah, I normally get corrected on that, so not a shocker there. Uh, for NFS Economy flight today, as always, so um, we'll go ahead and get on into the planning so we can get out of here. I hope you all enjoy the flight. Let's get into it. We will start on the FS Economy site here, so you can see the job. It pays 1900 bucks. It's going 73 nautical miles up to the uh, northeast. Um, three patients needing to be transported. Not the highest paying job in the world. Um, and 73 nautical miles, it seems like it would be easy enough, but it probably will not be. Um, we do have 30 gallons of Jet A loaded up in the aircraft here. We could add more, but I don't think we're going to need to. Uh, but taking a look in Sky Vector here, this is kind of uh, why I say it's not going to be as easy as it seems. So we'll be departing out of Mount Cook, and um, if we can, we may just try and hop over the mountains. I'll uh, change it over here. You can kind of see we're at Mount Cook and the mountain range right here. So if we can kind of snake our way over up to the coastline and go uh, directly up the coastline, we will. But I'm going to go ahead and program this in. Uh, to our GPS so we can um, take this route if we need to climb up and get well over uh, the mountains and fly kind of a, a safer path if there's some cloud cover or something we're a little bit unsure um, but we may risk it as well so this is the safe plan we'll see what we do whenever we actually get into the aircraft speaking of that let's go ahead and get into the sim so we can get on with the flight get out of Mount Cook and on to Hakitika Welcome on board the Diamond, everybody. We're on the ramp here at Mount Cook. Uh, went ahead and got a pushback from the ground crew. So we'll go ahead and start our flight here in FS Economy. You can see the aircraft is available on the ground there. Go back to the flight page and hit start flight. The timer is started and our passengers are loaded. So let's go ahead and hide that now and go through and get the aircraft ready uh, for startup here. So, get the uh, battery on. We did already open up the fuel tanks. Go ahead and open that up as well so we can see our engine instruments. You can see uh, the weather we're kind of working with around. A lot of clouds over there, really clear over there, so I think we are going to stick to our plan that we talked about um, from Sky Vector. I'm going to have to plug that in though. Uh, we'll go right master on. Uh, wait for the glow. Uh, our glow on to uh, turn off there is off the engines clear so we'll hit the starter all right right engine is started up we got good oil pressure oil temperatures coming up we'll go ahead and go master on for left engine and wait once again and it is off left engine is clear so start left engine is started up keep a little bit of power in so everything kind of warms up we got good oil pressure oil temperatures coming up everything else looks good so uh, like I said I'm gonna have to plug in the flight plan as uh, flight sim wouldn't let me do it as I'm kind of flying away from the airport then back to and it just doesn't like that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that get the aircraft ready for taxi and I'll be back with you momentarily all right so I have gone ahead and programmed the flight in on the uh, flight plan here so we're ready to start a taxi, we have runway one, tree, tree one. Um, if we took off runway tree one, we'd be flying into that and a whole lot of terrain. So we're gonna use runway one tree. Uh, the wind, it'll be about a three knot tailwind, but that's just fine. So we'll go ahead and get our taxi light on. Let's add some power. And make sure our parking brake is off. It is, it takes a ton of power to get this thing moving on the ground. Wave goodbye to the ground crew. And we'll, uh, Follow the taxiway up here, make a, another right, go to the runway, hold short, make a left, taxi all the way down. We'll use runway uh, one tree for departure, that way we're not dealing with all this terrain you can see, that you can't see, actually, because uh, of the clouds in front of us. So let's get up to the runway here and hold short. It's a beautiful area, it's, it kind of makes me appreciate the fact that we could see uh, we had such good weather whenever we flew in to Mount Cook because uh, it is really, really pretty, but uh, the weather's kind of getting in our way a little bit. So we're going to taxi, make a left, taxi down, and uh, turn around. 
you can see the flight plan I have uh, plugged in. Not entirely sure why HK is in front of Dubon there. Let's see if we can't clear that. That should fix it. Okay. You kind of double check those things. Ends up working out in the end. Alright, so we got that sorted out. Let's go ahead and get our landing light on. Get our takeoff flaps out. To the right, it looks clear on y'all's side, looks clear on my side. Let's go ahead and take the runway. Alright, so today we're going to be, like I said, taking off runway one tree. We're going to be looking for about 80 knots for our rotation speed. We're going to be trying to climb out right around 100 knots. That is the plan anyways. And we'll fly a runway heading uh, for just initially after departure and then I'm probably going to have to make a bit of a turn. Uh, for terrain as we climb on up and start our way. Let's go ahead and get our taxi light off. Coming up to the end to um, turn around here. See if we line it up well enough, we'll just roll right into the departure. Make sure to keep a little bit of power in. I don't want to have to basically redline the engine just to get it moving again on the ground. All right. Lining up runway one tree. It's nice and easy. So let's go ahead and go full power. Thing looks good. Do have a little bit of a tailwind, but like I said, we're going to look for 80 knots. Rotate and climb out. Um, we'll try and go for 100. We'll try and put it on flight level change mode as well. Airspeed is alive. Sixty knots. And here comes eighty. Rotate. Alright, we have a positive rate. It's going to go gear up. Bring our mouse down there. Try and set flight level change. Oh, wrong button. Set it for 100, but let's hand fly for a minute. We got that terrain directly in front of us. We'll come right, fly heading 150 until we're clear of it. And we'll go ahead and get our flaps in now. Should help us out a little bit more in the climb. Add a little bit more trim. At about 1500 feet a minute or so at 100 knots and I think we're clear in that terrain now it's just off to our left Look how beautiful this is it's uh, such a fun plane to hand fly to it's just it can be a, a little bit challenging sometimes go ahead and get our landing light off and uh, we'll arm our nav mode now Let's come back to the left. And get back on this line a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and activate our autopilot now. Engaging autopilot. A little bit of a smoother transition between the two would have been nice. But we're 4,000, 
about 4,500 for 11,500 is the initial plan. I don't... I'm, I'm torn because I do think we could just kind of climb over the mountains, um, continue climbing up, and basically just hop over and get up to the coastline and turn. Um, and then just follow this coastline up. It's really it's just getting over the mountains to the point to where uh, uh, we can come back down, get below the clouds, and kind of fly up. But I think what we have planned is just a safer bet all around. So we'll go ahead and keep that. We'll, we'll do what we planned. I mean, there's a reason. Um, we're kind of going that route anyways. And it might be a little bit longer, it might take a little bit more time, and burn a little bit more fuel, but it also lets us see a little bit more New Zealand, and I'm not going to complain about that. See just the monstrous cloud cover off to the east over there. It's all hanging out right over the mountains you see behind us. A ton of clouds. It does look clear uh, initially over this first range, but then you can kind of see uh, back behind us, how much cloud cover there is right on top of them there. Part of me wants to wing it and just go for it. And the other part of me uh, kind of likes flying the route that you plan out to, to better manage the situation. So we're going to fly the route. Uh, I spent all that time plugging it into the flight plan anyways. So we'll go ahead and fly it. We're about 7,500 for 11,500. Let's see about climbing up to 13 maybe. Uh, since we are going a little bit further, that might help us out a little bit more. And the flight level change mode is working perfectly as well. So let's go ahead and plan. Um, yeah, we'll go 13,000 here. Look at all those mountains. Absolutely beautiful. It's insanely low, like just huge blanket of clouds off over there. Got mountains off to our right. Definitely think taking off runway one tree was uh, the right option as well. If we need to, we can program in um, an approach into, uh, into our destination here. There's a couple RNAV approaches uh, along with I think an NDB approach, which I don't think I've ever actually flown. Alright, 1,000 feet to go in the climb. Climbing up a little bit higher as well gives us a absolutely beautiful view. You can see behind us once we uh, get a little bit closer to our turn in about 9 nautical miles. Maybe be able to see a little bit more of uh, kind of where we came from, but views out of the left look amazing. As always here in New Zealand, it is absolutely stunning. And then you can see out the right wing as well. Beautiful stuff. We're going to keep our power all the way up as we're leveling out here at 13,000. Uh, the wind is pretty strong. It normally is here in New Zealand for some reason. Um, just likes to give us a little bit of a hassle from time to time. We got 26 knots, almost out directly out of the west. So, helping us at the moment, but we'll kind of see what happens later on in the flight. Getting our speed up a little bit more. We're about two minutes now from Mammoth, where we'll actually kind of turn and start heading the right direction.
and at this point we're uh, in our flight um, you know maybe as simple as proceed direct to I think the next point's uh, Dubon I'm saying that right um, oh you might might be able to just go ahead and proceed direct to it but uh, we'll just fly the full flight plane out here we almost got 200 knots across the ground nice feeling in the diamond we need to pull our power back a little bit for about I think I'm supposed to be doing about 7 gallons an hour somewhere around there per engine anyways I think we burned a little bit more we'll kind of see it is getting a little bit bumpy right now so being a little bit slower not gonna hurt It wouldn't be a New Zealand flight without a little bit of turbulence. Wow, though. That makes it worth it. I'm looking at it now. Uh, this is kind of where we came from. So we uh, flew all the way up uh, here, and then we just turned, and now we're proceeding um, off to the north. It does look like we could have cleared the mountains if we just went over and kind of flown up the coast. However, I think in doing so, we would have been up on top of the clouds and just trying to find a hole to descend down through. Um, since we're already over here, we'll, and it's, it's extremely clear where we are right now. Obviously, we've got some clouds off to our right side, and we've got some coming up in front of us as well. But um, I think uh, sticking with this plan... It's a little bit more sure, uh, even if that would have potentially worked out. Um, also, just amazing views around Mount Cook. Like I said before, uh, whenever we flew in, you should check it out. Mount Cook, absolutely beautiful in the sim. November Zulu Mike Charlie, if uh, you want to check it out. And hopefully, um, I really haven't been disappointed with an airport in New Zealand yet other than some uh, sim problems, uh, not necessarily anything to do with the airports themselves. So uh, we got a little bit of a track in front of us, 38 nautical miles to Dubon. Uh, we're doing just under 200 knots across the ground. That wind is kind of giving us a little bit of a tailwind, mostly a crosswind though. So we'll go ahead and buckle up for this next little bit. I'll let you guys enjoy the views and uh, we'll be back for too long. As you can see, we are getting bounced around quite heavily. The wind is out of the west about almost 40 knots. Um, we're flying over the mountains and it is just absolutely beating us to a pulp here. Um, we are direct to uh, Hakitika, uh, VOR, and then on to the airport. We're going to start our descent before too long, but I want to clear the mountains first and uh, hopefully get into a little bit of smoother air as this is kind of ridiculous. But uh, we're going to continue on, be ready to start our descent shortly, hopefully. Stayed in the cruise a bit longer than I might have wanted to, uh, but we're going to go ahead and start our way down. I'm going to pull the power way, way back, because uh, we just don't want to get above 162 in this uh, as rough as the air is right now. Uh, so we go ahead and pull the power back. That's uh, kind of one of the things I'm going to do to compensate for staying up so high uh, for so long, but also um, uh, it's just something we need to do for how rough the air is. So we're going to go ahead and set a descent for 2,000 feet a minute and start our way down. Runways available are 0321 and 1230. 
tree zeros a little bit shorter. Um, one, two, tree zero is a little bit shorter, but uh, it's a little bit more of a straight in. We'll see what the we'll see what the winds look like once we get a little bit closer. But I think that's what we're gonna try and plan for. I'm really gonna pull the speed back now. Um, if we need to once we get lower and uh, hopefully in some, like I said, some smoother air. That's really all I'm worried about at the moment. Uh, get into some smooth air. We can drop our gear as long as we're below 162 knots. And our uh, takeoff flaps at 136. Full flaps 119. And our approach speed uh, that we're going to be aiming for today is around 90 knots. So, um, yeah, everything's kind of all over the place right now with uh, how the wind's kind of treating us up here. But hopefully as we descend, it will get a little bit smoother and a little bit of a nicer ride. Just flying over those mountains, uh, it's generally pretty eventful. You throw about a 40 knot wind into the equations. Uh, we're not in a, a very very substantial aircraft either. It's uh, pretty lightweight, so not surprised we're getting bounced around as badly as we are. Uh, we are quite high at the moment for our initial kind of approach in. And since um, the VOR we're flying to is actually off to the south of the field a little bit, it may be more of a situation of a straight in for runway zero tree. Um, we'll just kind of see how that progresses and see what the winds look like anyways as we continue down. Right now, um, runway tree zero would be the best bet with the winds the way they are. If uh, it kind of holds steady, but if the winds really die off once we get lower to the ground, we're not going to worry about it so much. So at this point, um, temperatures right around freezing. Uh, we're getting lower and lower and the clouds look a decent amount lower than us uh, anyways. So hopefully it'll continue to warm up and we can shoot through this nice little gap in the clouds. And if we need to accelerate our descent um, more once we get uh, kind of through that little patch so I think we're going to increase our or decrease our rate of descent make sure we kind of make it into this hole in the clouds and then really uh, just aggressively drop down and the airfield should be somewhere up to the uh, on the uh, kind of making a right turn up this uh, coastline that you can just barely see airfield should be somewhere over there. So I have uh, Tree 00 in the heading bug at the moment. I um, think I'll actually go ahead and set it up for 030. And we'll see if we can make that work. Temperature's still right around freezing. So I want to make it to this hole in the clouds before we just absolutely um, do our best impersonation of a rock. And fall through this nice little gap. We have 2,000 feet set. And we can see the run or the uh, airport kind of in our little... Um, on our synthetic vision here on the uh, display whatever it's called I kind of forget uh, we should be clear now so let's go ahead and step up our descent here go 2500 feet a minute we got the power pulled all the way out Wind's still looking pretty strong out of the west. No visual on the field just yet. But it should be... Right, yep, it is right there. So that's runway 03. And that's runway 03. And it looks like the wind is going to be such that we're going to want to take runway uh, tree 0. So we'll fly to this point, and then we'll disengage the autopilot. Uh, fly over midfield, make a right-hand turn, 
uh, right traffic basically all the way down. Uh, it'll give us a chance to kind of get our airspeed situated and all that good stuff anyways, so. Keep coming on down. And this will take us right over the field. A beautiful little town down there. Alright, so we're manually taking control of the plane here. We're going to fly over midfield. Uh, we could go take off flaps now at this point if we want, but we're going to go ahead and kind of fly outbound a little bit. Let's try and keep it around uh, 1,400 feet for the moment. Let's see the threshold of the runway down there. Uh, we can go ahead and get our gear down. Sure, we got three green lights. All right, the gear is all down. Let's go ahead and make a right turn. I wanted to stay up this high because it's probably not right traffic at this field due to uh, the terrain here, but we'll make it work. We'll fly heading uh, 120 out. I'll hold around 1400 feet. and then turn back in for a final runway tree zero. Let's see if we can spot, there's the field down there, off to our right. Let's be a fun approach in and look at that beautiful view out the nose as well. Need to pull back, not descend anymore. Let's go ahead and go uh, take off flaps Ninety knots for the approach speed. Let's go ahead and turn to the right, We're cutting it close to these hills. May not be exactly the procedure you should follow or anything like that, uh, but the fun is in the flying. Look at that! That is beautiful with the clouds and everything. Holding about a thousand feet, we're below 119, so let's go ahead and go full flaps now. Looking for 90 knots and looking for the runway. There it is, we need to turn and make it a pretty sharp one here. So we are going to overshoot just a little bit. This runway is kind of hiding in those trees. We'll line ourselves back up. We didn't overshoot that far and aiming for 90 knots. We're at 95 right now. Got about eight knots on the nose. I think it's worth it to come around for uh, runway tree zero with the wind the way it is. really sit up in the seat here to get a visual on the runway. Make sure we kind of thread it between these trees. To be landing a little bit high. Right on 90 knots. A little bit of a freeze there in the sim. Right rudder. Whoa. Well, it was a smooth landing, but geez, we did not hold center line at all. I still need to work on getting controls sorted out. We'll go ahead and clear off to the left. Man, <laughs> we barely kept that out of the grass. Well, they're not always pretty, but landed nonetheless. 
That uh, I'm gonna blame the freeze on approach. Ah, look at that view. It's off the runway. That is beautiful. All right, let's clear. Let's get our taxi lights on. Get our landing light off. Go ahead and get our flaps up and go to standby there. And we will taxi off over in front of the building here. I'm sure the patients are uh, extremely ready to get off of this airplane. Between my landing and uh, the incredible amount of turbulence we had on the flight in, I would not blame them either. So we'll go ahead and turn around and kind of line up, do a big circle, point the aircraft away. And we'll stop here. Let's go ahead and get the client back up, hit the parking brake. That will complete our flight. Not the smoothest flight by any means. Um, both literally with the turbulence and the landing and everything. I'm still trying to figure out, um, get my controls back to the way they felt before the um, most recent update. I think I got the rudder pedals a little bit better, uh, but my um, roll and pitch on uh, my joystick and everything, it, it feels a little bit wonky still. Um, either way, I had I had a blast flying it. I hope you all did enjoy as well. If nothing else, breathtaking scenery. Um, as always, I appreciate having you guys along for the flight. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, make sure to give the video a like. Consider subscribing if you want to see some more um, sometimes terrible, sometimes somewhat decent flying. Um, nevertheless, some cool trips into some places you might have never um, thought about going otherwise. So, yeah, uh, like I said, I appreciate having you all along. Until next time, bye-bye.